Good afternoon. I'm here to talk a bit about Sonatra and what we do. We focus on developing local injection treatments. And the goal is to achieve better and longer lasting effectiveness without systemic side effects. The approach is to create new chemical entities by attaching established drugs to our novel uh, platform molecule. And this enables a sustained release of that said uh, well-known drug. Our lead program is SYN321. It's a local injection treatment against symptomatic knee osteoarthritis or for symptomatic knee osteoarthritis with diclofenac as the active substance. You have an image of the formulated solution there. We've done uh, lots of preclinical studies. One interesting study we'll get back to later uh, was done in horses where we validated our hypothesis regarding the slow release mechanism. We'll get back to that. In 2020, we were granted our first US patent and our portfolio is growing. Just recently, we um, got our CTA approved by the Swedish MPA to start our first clinical trial. It will be a phase one slash two A, so we'll go straight to patients. Just briefly on osteoarthritis, it's uh, the world's most common joint disease, as you might know. It's chronic, it has a complex pathology, and there's currently no cure. Given the size of the spread of the disease, the therapeutic market, therapeutics market is very large, and it's growing. And why is it growing? Primarily due to an aging population in the developed world. As, as you might know, one does not die from osteoarthritis, so many people end up living with the condition for a very, very long time. We believe that the FDA will classify SYN321 as a new chemical entity. And this is what the synthesized molecule looks like. In blue, you have the hyaluronic acid backbone, which bonds to a our proprietary linker, which in turn bonds to diclofenac. When the solution is injected into the knee joint, into the synovial fluid, hydrolysis will act on this and release the diclofenac and the hyaluronic acid from the linker over time. And we believe that this will give a sustained pain relief and an anti-inflammatory effect from the diclofenac, as well as the so-called viscous supplementation uh, from the hyaluronic acid. And at the same time, as we do that, it's a local administration of diclofenac, which means that we hope to avoid almost all of the common and known side effects from oral administration of diclofenac. We believe that one injection, uh, we estimate that one injection of our final product will contain about six milligrams of diclofenac. One pill, the standard, standard size pill of uh, diclofenac that you get at the pharmacy is 50 milligrams. And you have to take that pill several times a day. In parallel, or at the same time, the actual local concentration of diclofenac is expected to be much higher with our injection. Getting back to this horse study I mentioned earlier, here we compared the SYN321 uh, against a non-bonded mixture of uh, hyaluron hyaluronic acid and diclofenac and with the joint injections in the knees of horses. And this is what we saw. The yellow lines, they represent the free diclofenac in the synovial fluid after injection of the mixture, as you can see, within two days, it has disappeared from the synovial fluid, whereas the green lines, they represent what we saw with SYN321, that the free diclofenac remains, and it remains for the duration of the study period, which was 14 days. We believe with our new ways of formulating this, that if we extended the study and did it for a longer time, we would see free diclofenac for, for, for longer as well. No adverse reactions in the horses also should be said. 
we've done a we ha we've done a full tox program as well. Just looking quickly at the market and the competition as we see it, we have uh, opioids commonly used in America. They are seen by many as effective, but as you know, they have their side effects. Corticosteroids have effectiveness, but also comes with long-term use uh, could have a degrading effect on cartilage, which is obviously very counterproductive in treating osteoarthritis. We have orally administrated NSAIDs, also effective, but come with side effects, often gastrointestinal and, and the like. Important to mention are hyaluronic acid injection. Not so common in Europe, but very, very popular in the US. These are much kinder to the patients, but perhaps have a slightly lower uh, effect. Hence, we believe that syn to one can hit a sweet spot here by being both kind and effective. And this would obviously mean a very large potential in revenue. Without going into too much detail here, as we think that we have a especially good shot at the market for hyaluronic acid injections in the US, and that's important because, as said, it's very popular and it commands a rather high price between $300 and $800 per injection. So we've, in this model, we've estimated on $750 per injection and looking at an average use of about two injections per year per patient. Current status, we are we have a time slot to produce our GMP drug product for the first study in, in early Q1 next year. As said, we have the approval to start clinical trial in place. And we will follow the US or well, the 505B2 regulatory pathway in the US. Looking at our IP. This is a visualization of our compound patent. It's for the hyaluronic acid backbone bonded to the linker and a drug. That means it doesn't have to be diclofenac, it could be another small molecule. It's valid in America, Europe, Canada. And during development of formulation and sterilization, we made some very interesting new discoveries that we have, where we have applied for patent protection also. Hopefully this will expand and extend the duration of our intellectual property. Looking at some additional indications, pipeline going forward, for syn three, two, one, we could of course uh, work on using it for other joints, hands, hips, etc. There's an important veterinary segment. These type of injections of corticosteroids or hyaluronic acid are, are common in horses and dogs. If we look at the actual drug delivery platform, we could remove the diclofenac and replace it with, uh, with paclitaxel and uh, uh, use it as a chemotherapy. Uh, it's a post-operative injection in the cavity where, where a tumor has once been. We could also attach uh, dexamethasone, for example, and uh, treat RA. There's a lot of expertise in the team. My boss is traveling today. That's why I'm here. We have an experienced board of directors. I'd like to highlight Ben Klinkvist at the top right. He is the inventor of both the platform technology and also syn three to one. That was it. Thank you, Magnus. Do we have, for the last time, do we have any questions? And of course, we do have a question. I don't know whether I'm ignorant or not. This diclofenac, is that a substance that I should know a trade name for? Voltaren is the, the most common tra trade name. And uh, the follow up. Uh, ignorant question is why did you start there? Why uh, OA uh, with your technology? Why was that the most um, 
yeah, why did you start there? I think the question is best. Uh, is, uh, I mean, it's, it's been a long, it's an idea for a long time with Bengt. And, but I think it's, it started with the, the technological insights of what you could do with hyaluronic acid, how you could link, link this large polymer up with, with other small molecules. We know that hyaluronic acid is, is very similar to synovial fluid. So it's interesting to see what you can do in a, in a knee joint with, with hyaluronic acid. Uh, I mean, it's, it's already used commonly on its own. And uh, I think that it was a, you could derive a, a conclusion from there. Yeah, and uh, it seems like you can connect this to pretty much anything, or where are the limitations? Uh, I would have to pass on the exact limitations, but I okay. said most small molecules okay, okay. we can work with. Yes. Yeah, and in terms of the strategical decisions uh, that we saw a little glimpse of, how have you reasoned there? No, I think we the 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 primary strategy is to get into to to the clinic with the first with syn three to one, but obviously the chemotherapy aspect is is very interesting to 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 build on after that. And you were lifting a little bit about new discoveries. Is there a possibility to extend on on that? I think we we can get back to that when uh, the uh, when the application is disclosed. It'll be about okay. a year from now. I had one question, actually. You but said we're very happy about it. We're very happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good news. <laughs> very good news, yes. You were saying that this type of injections are popular in, in the US or maybe all of North America, but not so popular in, in Europe. How come? I, I'd, I'd say uh, well, cultural reasons. Uh, this picked up as a trend there. I'm not sure. Uh, I, uh, I think in Europe... Uh, corticosteroids are m a more common uh, substitute. They would, they would, perhaps that would perhaps be, be the preferred treatment, okay. uh, an injection of a corticosteroid in Europe. But that means that your strategic thinking and planning is more geared toward the US at the moment? Yes, than it, the well, I think it would be anyway, given yeah. the, the, the price levels, but uh, it makes double the sense that, that we have the, the, the culture and the, the implementation of this sort of treatment in, in North America. Do you see the same difference in veterinary use? Uh, I think for veterinary use, uh, we've not, to be honest, not explored North America so much. We've had very much more of a European focus there. We know that, it, I mean, we, the, the early on we've, we've looked at uh, the tre treatment of horses, race horses with this. Yep. We know that hyaluronic acid injections are very common. Osteoarthritis is a big problem in horses. And uh, we see a, a large market within Europe for that. Obviously not as large as the human market, but still a, a good uh, ancillary to that. But that's a secondary concern for now. Now the focus is on the human, yes, human yes. market and the human studies. Yes, absolutely. And we would, uh, we're not exp experts on uh, the development of veterinary products. So we're obviously looking to partner with someone who's, who's more knowledgeable there. And you are the CFO, so I have to ask about the financial situation. I'd say, I mean, we're our type of company. We're uh, always looking for for additional capital. Well, who is? I'm it? somewhat constrained, I think, by regulation to this. We're a private company, so I can't really talk too much about uh, and solicit investors, uh, especially when the cameras are on, as <laughs> I believe. But we're, I mean, our type of company. This yeah. is this is what we do. We raise money and work on the development. Any further questions? This anticipated twice a year seems to be very infrequent. Shouldn't it work much better if it was a more regular injection? Yes, I think our plan, the, the, we're, we're looking for a therapeutic effect of three months. So our and this is a commercial estimate of how frequent a patient would go to the clinic and get an injection. So we've estimated that at, at, at twice a year, and based on data for hyaluronic acid injections, for example. Obviously, it would be there's no reason why a patient couldn't go more frequently and uh, take this injection every quarter, for example, to 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 keep the effect going. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So this is just our conservative estimate of the, the revenue. Obviously, the, the, I think some patients would perhaps only get an injection once a year, and some would get it more frequent. 